This brief video will discuss five different skin conditions that can present in the newborn period, including sebaceous gland hyperplasia, erythema toxicum neonatorum, neonatal cephalic pustulosis, transient neonatal pustular melanosis, and infantile seborrheic dermatitis. Sebaceous gland hyperplasia is a popular rash that is seen in newborns. It is both very common and benign. The rash presents with groups of tiny yellowish white papules without surrounding erythema. The papules are about 1 to 2 mm in diameter and regularly spaced. It may be mistaken for milia, but by comparison, milia are often more solitary and have a somewhat wider color. The papules are most commonly found on the nose and upper lip. Lesions are also commonly found on the chin, cheeks, and forehead. The diagnosis is made clinically without any need for specific testing. Spontaneous resolution usually occurs within a few weeks. Neonatal cephalic pustulosis is a common and benign rash that appears within a few weeks following birth, usually between the second and fourth week. However, it may be present at birth. The rash consists of small red inflammatory papules and pustules. Unlike in infantile acne, which usually occurs later on, comedones are not present. It typically occurs on the face, most commonly on the cheeks, but it may be present over other areas of the face and scalp as well. The diagnosis is made clinically, however it can be difficult to differentiate from malaria rubra. Treatment is usually not required. Spontaneous resolution without scarring commonly occurs within a few months. In severe cases, treatment with a topical antifungal or mild steroid can be helpful. It is a common postular rash that is seen in newborns. Rather interestingly, extensive cases are rare in preterm infants. It usually appears between 24 to 72 hours of life. Having said that, it may be present at birth. It presents with small whitish or yellowish papules with an erythematous halo. These papules, however, quickly become sterile pustules. The rash is most commonly found on the face, trunk, and proximal extremities. The rash migrates, disappearing and reappearing on different parts of the body, except on the palms and soles which are spared. The diagnosis is usually made clinically via visual recognition of the rash. It is important to differentiate these lesions from an infection. When in doubt, a right or gram stain can be performed on the contents of the lesion. With erythema toxicum neonatorum, only azenophils are present. No treatment is necessary. In fact, some creams and lotions can actually worsen the rash. Spontaneous resolution usually occurs within a week. However, the rash may reoccur up to the age of 3 months. It is a common vesicular pustular rash that is seen in newborns. Unlike many other newborn rashes, it is almost always present at birth. It presents with small superficial vesicles, pustules, and macules. Unlike with erythema toxicum neonatorum, significant underlying erythema is not present. The vesicles and pustules are very superficial, fragile, and easily rupture. They rupture within two days, leaving behind a small hyperpigmented macule with or without a fine colored scale. All three lesions, vesicles, pustules, and macules, can be present simultaneously, including at birth. In post-term newborns, however, only macules may be present. Occasionally, satellite lesions may occur in proximity to a larger lesion, thus mimicking an infection. The rash can occur anywhere on the body, including the palms and soles, albeit less often. The diagnosis is usually made clinically via visual recognition of the rash. When in doubt, a gram stain can be performed on the contents of a lesion. With transient neonatal pustular melanosis, numerous neutrophils are present, but no bacteria. Likewise, culture would not grow a bacterial organism. No treatment is necessary. Spontaneous resolution of the pustular lesions usually occurs within a few days. The hyperpigmented macules, however, may persist for weeks to months before fading entirely. Both the erythema toxicum neonatorum and transient neonatal pustular melanosis can present with a pustular rash in the newborn period. 
Erythema toxicum neonatorum usually appears between 24 to 72 hours of life. It presents with small papules, which are surrounded by an erythematous halo, that quickly become pustules. The lesions do not appear on the palms and soles, and do not result in hyperpigmentation. Transient neonatal pustulomenolinosis is usually present at birth and presents with vesicles, pustules, and macules, which are not surrounded by an erythematous halo. The lesions can occur almost anywhere on the body, including the palms and soles, and falling rupture may leave behind a hyperpigmented macule with a color at scale. Infantile seborrheic dermatitis is a common and benign inflammatory rash that occurs in infants. The infant is generally unaffected by the rash, other than possibly experiencing mild itchiness. It can appear at up to two years of age, most commonly appearing within the first few months of life. However, it usually does not appear in the first week of life. It is characterized by greasy plaques with a yellowish scale, and there may or may not be underlying erythema. It typically occurs on the scalp, but it can also occur on the face, around the ears, and in the intertrigonous areas, such as the axilla and groin. The diagnosis is made clinically. Specific testing is not needed. Initial treatment of the scalp is usually conservative. Educate parents that it is not contagious or due to poor hygiene. It usually resolves spontaneously within a few weeks to months. Application of emollients overnight and or frequent shampooing with non-medicated baby shampoo can help loosen the scales. A soft toothbrush or fine tooth comb can be used to gently remove loose flakes or scales. Advise parents not to scratch or scrape the lesions. Doing so can result in injuries, scarring, and infection. For more extensive lesions, or when areas other than the scalp are affected, initial treatment with mild corticosteroids or topical antifungals is recommended.